All right, so we've got our light and shadow in. The painting is starting to really come together now. It's starting to feel like basically what the painting's gonna be. Our next step, our little finishing details, I like to call it, are gonna kind of pull everything together. It's the last step. It's here that I'm gonna lose some edges, I'm gonna add some details, I'm gonna push some contrast. It's all the little things that, that really make the painting sing. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of some of the uh, residual line work that we've got from the rough drawing. So I'm just going to go down to my line drawing layers, grab my eraser, and I'm just going to start knocking back some of these, uh, like I said, some of these residual lines that are standing out. Some of them I want to hold on to. I like how they, I like how, what they do to the image. So uh, I've just hit a couple more on the face there, finished it up there. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and add a new layer. I'm going to set it to multiply, and what I want to do is I want to go in and I just want to start hitting and defining a couple of the, you know, the areas around the, the, uh, the eyes and then the side of the face, defining some of those shadow areas. It's really, it, you know, this, this stage is really all about kind of, for lack of a better way of explaining it, bringing everything kind of into focus. So I've kind of got this neutral warm color. And, you know, I, I want to define some of these plane changes, some of these little areas down in here, add some fur textures. And I'm just going into the shadows. I'm darkening up areas in the shadows, but really creating, you know, some textures in the fur. You know, I want, I want it to feel like there's fur growing on the face. And so, so that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I'm just hitting little areas here and there and just, and just really being tasteful with it. So now I want to go ahead and define that eye, hit the darks in there. You know, one of the things that that rough drawing does is it, it, it you know, you, it gives you dark areas because of the line work. Well, when you get rid of that, you got to redefine some of those dark areas for the painting. And so that's what I just did for the eye. Now, I really want to get that eye to sing. I want it to, to really stand out. So I want to hit these little highlights. And you can see it's just being, it's very, very tasteful. You know, when you hit you know, this last stage, you know, here I want to get a little bit of glint, a little bit of light coming off the, the bottom corner of the eye. Just little touches. Those are the things that really make it sing. It's, it's all about being tasteful at this stage. So I've got the eye done, and now what I want to do is I'm going in here and I'm just hitting some highlights in the snout, hitting some brighter fur areas. There, so I've got the chin working really well. I've got the nose working. You can see that now it's really starting to pop. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm defining some of the textures. And here I'm going in and grabbing, you know, some a little bit brighter, warmer colors for the stripes and just hitting those light areas on the stripes themselves specifically and getting those to stand out, getting them to feel a little bit more furry. And I want to do the same thing, you know, down here in the chin. And it's, I'm just hitting little areas here and there, just defining hair. And if you notice, uh, I'm not hitting everything. I'm just hitting little bits. A, a little bit will go a long way. Here, this is, I'm, I'm creating bounced light right here, a little reflected light. That light from the neck will reflect back onto the back side of that chin. And so that's what I'm creating here is a little bit of reflected light. Might be catching a little bit of light from the ground. It's all of these little details that really that add to the realism, add to um, a sense of light uh, to your image, that just really start pulling it together. And once again, I can't emphasize enough that this stage is really all about being tasteful. It's just grabbing little bits here and there. And you can see, I'm just, you know, like right here, I'm hitting this, this shadow area. But now look, look at where it goes into shadow and in, in the snout right there, it, it really feels like it gives it a much better sense of light on that stripe. And so I'm just, just want to hit areas to warm them up, uh, to give them a little bit of texture. And so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm grabbing my, my ink dropper and I'm touching the stripe color. And then I'm going and I'm, I'm grabbing a slightly brighter version of that color. And then I go back in and with my small brush, I go in and just add a little bit of texture right over the top of it. And it really gets to pop. There we go. That feels pretty good. So now, as all of this starts to come together, I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of analyzing the whole thing and I wanna see, you know, at this stage I do a lot of, you know, stepping back, looking at it, seeing what it needs, seeing what's working, what's not working, that sort of thing. So right here, I just, I wanna start defining those, the, the, the grasses in the foreground, you, you know, 
when we added that layer over the top and front, um, I just indicated them very loosely. And so now it's my chance just to go in and, and I'm still being quick, I'm still being spontaneous, but I'm being a bit more detailed now. There we go. Now you can see it's starting to come together. So now I've got another layer set to overlay and I'm just hitting all these little bits of grass, hitting the little bright areas. I'm adding little bits of dust in the, in the air floating around. You know, there might be insects, there might be dirt, you know, just different things floating around in, in the air that, that'll give it a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of, a little bit of interest. And you can see now we're getting some nice depth, but I'm, I'm holding back from making it very contrasty. There, so that's all starting to come together pretty nicely. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the, uh, the layers for the sky, get everything collapsed down to one layer. So now I can go in and I can grab that uh, the grainy uh, pastel jitter brush and I can go in and one thing I love about this brush is I can grab a color, let's say, you know, I'll grab a little bit of a warm color here and then what that does is I, I can start to smear the, the paint around. One of the things I love about this type of, uh, this type of the style, this type of painting, is I, I like looseness, I like losing edges, I like things to kind of blur out. And so that's what I do at this stage. I love, you know, especially with these clouds, you know, I've got a lot of detail in the zebra in the foreground. So I, I like being able to go in and lose some of these edges. And you can see, I've jumped ahead and here we are just finishing up those nice edges. And so now that zebra, zebra lion, <laughs> kind of sits really nicely against those nice, loose, kind of impressionistic clouds in the background. And here I want to add a little bit of cool. Uh, I've, I've grabbed a paintbrush and I'm just adding some nice cool touches to the background, a, a complement to the warm colors of the grass. The grasses are basically orange and so I'm grabbing something in the blue range, which is an opposite color. And it just, it, it, I like it, it, it slightly vibrates. It sits in the background really nice for me. And I, I like how that feels. It, it, it recedes back, uh, especially with that storm in the background. It feels really nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Make sure it gets, uh, <laughs> you don't want to lose everything. Make sure, that's the other good thing, you know, get in the habit of saving everything. Just make sure you save it. Here I'm going to collapse everything down to uh, one layer. I like to do that. Um, well, I'm collapsing the zebra down to one layer. I like to do that so I can start blending layers together. There's something that doesn't look quite right though. One thing that bothers me is the fact that all the values, it's all really contrasty and I'm losing the central focus, which is the head. So I'm gonna add a layer on top. I'm gonna to set it to multiply and I'm gonna grab a nice cool color like we did before. Here we go, I'm gonna set that to multiply. And I'm going to come over and grab our shadow color, which is that, you know, that slightly blue um, neutral color. I'm going to grab a nice size brush. There we go. And get that blue kind of grayish. And what I want to do is I want to add a shadow right over the back end of the zebra. There. Now you can see the values are pulled together. It's not so contrasty over there. Now my eye is going right to where the area of most contrast, which is the, the face, the area of um, interest that I want you to look. That's right where I want everyone to go. Now um, it's got a great sense of light. Uh, it feels balanced to me. I like the composition. It's got a nice sense of drama. And there you go. And that's how you do a little painting using your Wacom Intuos tablet and Corel Painter Essentials. Thanks for watching, you guys.